Okay, so you guys have a cup of coffee handy? Because this is gonna be a bit of a long one. This is what we call in the professional world a book. Um, let's see. Uh, so this is from, what is this guy's name? Anyway, Donovan B. Um, I've been in IT since 2010. I started out doing HP warranty support hardware. Then I was lucky enough to be called out of the blue by a temp agency and got a really good job working with a defense contractor doing desk, desk side support. I did that for two and a half years. I left because during that time I graduated college, Bachelor of Applied Arts and Science, Applied Technology and Performance Improvement. Um, I also had acquired my C CNA. With that, I put my resume out there. Later, a temp agency called me about a level one technician job at a large financial company working in their NOC, uh, Network Operations Center. Um, I did that, and within three months, I was let go. Uh, they knew I was new, and I had just had an interview with my manager, and he said I was doing well. I know they were really needing Spanish speakers because we had lost a bunch of them, and the ones that were left were always on the phone. Anyway, so I then got a part-time gig with a friend of a friend that had some clients and he did their IT support. Then I was hired on with another small company and there I was able to touch servers, deal with city organizations. We provided support for three small cities. This also meant helping the fire and police personnel. I was uh, just let go from this job two months ago. Was told that I lack confidence. Um, even though he still wanted me to continue to support another client and would pay me uh, to help them. They were my client, and to be real, I was constantly asking the other techs if they had work that I could help them with. I really think he just didn't have the work for me. Uh, the first month, I was in disbelief and just did nothing to look for another job. Looking for jobs now, I find that desktop and help desk jobs are plentiful, but finding a network job that is for an entry-level uh, person like myself is almost non-existent. So how can I gain the experience to get a network admin position when it seems they want experienced people? Is this where I'm supposed to say I can do all this work and that I uh, have no how to do the things they want, knowing that I have no clue how to do them, or honestly say I have not done that but I can learn? So this is one of those questions you get into, and this is my problem with all these people wanting to go into the datacom networking world, is the networking world can be a bit more brutal to get into than uh, system support, system admin, and all that kind of stuff, just because there's not nearly as much of it, right? You know, if you have one 48-port switch, that 48-port switch can go out to 48 computers. All 48 computers need support. Whereas you've got one Cisco switch and one router, maybe one other networking device, and that's it, right? So the, the datacom guy has three little pieces of equipment. The sysadmins have 48 at least. Kind of see, the, kind of see the, the percentage difference there. So one of the issues you're going to get into is if you want to be a network person, is the, the question is, is how do you go out and get experience, especially if people aren't hiring? Because one of the issues that you run into nowadays is, again, this field is now a mature-ish field. Uh, when I got back, when I got into the IT sector back late 90s, uh, early 2000s, uh, the fact of the matter is, is this was a new field. Cisco, uh, like a lot of the Cisco stuff was still new. The MCSE was still new. All this stuff was still new. And so you could take a 23-year-old 23, 23 and you could plop them into these settings and it was all new. So there wasn't a lot of experience. You know, nobody had a lot of experience in the stuff. So it was very easy to get jobs and get ahead and all that kind of stuff. Well, fast forward now. 2015, it's no longer so new anymore. You know, the people have been doing this job for a long time. Uh, and one of the issues you run into nowadays is simply the fact that a lot of these systems have already been installed. Where the money is for all parties is installing new systems. So when you build out offices for the first time, that that is the gold mine, right? And so what you have to think about is into you know 99, 2000. We had very primitive systems. We had very primitive systems. So we, we had a lot of businesses out there that were creating their networks for the first time, you know, deploying these networks for the first time. And so there was a lot of money to be made in that deployment. So especially for new people, it was great because you could go in and you could, you could do things like unbox Cisco equipment. It's like, okay, we're going to bring this, these newbies in. They're going to unbox all the Cisco equipment. They're going to screw it into the wall. Uh, and then the people that we pay real money will come in and configure it. Well, these noobs 
after they do everything, are sitting around anyway. And so the old timers will find a noob that they like and then kind of show them how everything is done. That noob then starts to get experience with that higher level stuff. The noob sticks around for a little while. You know, the higher level guy says, hey, I want to go grab a cup of coffee. You know what? You can do this little task. The noob does that little task and then we build and you, you get up to be a professional level. And that's kind of how it went. Well, the issue nowadays is since uh, you don't have uh, the, those massive deployments anymore, there, there's not need for people on that level. You don't need network people to unbox equipment. I mean, it's just not uh, not ne uh, necessary anymore. So there's a lot of people that already have experience. It's and so that that's basically where you are with the networking field. So what I would argue is if all you have is a CCNA, um, I would not try. To, if I was going to go into networking, I would I would barely even put out a resume with a CCNA. Hand a spaghetti monster. Spaghetti monster, honest truth. Uh, the reason is because you don't stand out with a CCNA. The CCNA is the very first level uh, in the, the networking field. And you are just new and you are just young. And it doesn't really say a lot. You, you don't stick out, right? Uh, so what I would argue that you should do, especially, like I say, if, you, if you're looking at this position and everything, it's all situational. Um, but if you're looking at, there are a lot of desktop and help desk jobs, but there's not network jobs. What I would argue that you should do is that because experience technology experience trumps everything uh, so I would rather hire somebody for doing networking that had two years of, of desktop support um, versus somebody that's just sat on their butt for two years right so what I would argue is go for the highest level job you can get the highest level technical job you can get if it's help desk if it's help desk if it's desktop support it's desktop support if it's what right and then when you have that job uh, then go for your CCMP if you really want to do data com if you really do want to do networking go for your CCMP that will just be better all the way around. You are actually, in fact, getting experience doing technical things. And again, remember, in the tech, in the IT world, in the technology world, there's a lot of skills that have nothing to do with the systems that you're working on. Uh, communicating with clients, troubleshooting procedures, dealing with, with ticketing systems, right? There are a thousand of these different tasks that I don't care whether you're an MCSE or a CCNP or you're a PBX administrator, it goes across the board, right? And then, then obviously there's the specific tasks for your technology. So what I would say is go get the highest level technical job that you can while you're in that technical job, then go start studying for your CCNP. Keep putting out the resumes, keep putting out the resumes, but realistically, I would I would almost put the resumes on hold uh, until I got the CCNP. Once you get the CCNP, then you can go from there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, from what you're telling me here, uh, I think that would be your best bet. Because I know, I mean, there's a lot of people out there, they're like, no, Eli, I want to be a datacom guy. And you're like, again, you don't, I mean... <laughs> I mean, eh, you know what I'm saying? You just don't, again, Cisco equipment doesn't get viruses. Cisco equipment doesn't get blue screen of death. Cisco, I mean, it, it's not the preferable way to do things by any stretch of the imagination. So any of you Cisco administrators don't start beating on me. But the reality is, the reality is you can plug in Cisco equipment, you can configure it once, and you can walk away for 15 years, and it's still going to do its job. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yes, you need to update the OSs, and yes, you should update the configurations and all that. You should do that. You should do that. But the reality is, if you just plug that crap in and you walk the hell away, uh, probably it's going to be fine. Whereas, again, like I say, with computers and PCs and all these other systems type stuff, they just break because you sneeze on them, right? Uh, so that would be the thing I would say, is, is get technical experience the highest level technical experience you can if you can't get it doing networking stuff do it somewhere else go for your ccmp and go from there because the other thing that you can do right is remember a lot of companies want to hire from within and so again it's the whole thing is you hire and you just you start doing desktop support right and while you're doing desktop support you're studying for your ccmp Make sure everybody you meet knows you're studying for the CCMP. And then, so when you're walking around, you're doing the stuff, you start talking to the, the datacom guys, the networking guys uh, in the company. And, and again, it's the same thing like, hey, are you guys doing any deployments? Hey, I was just wondering, you know, when my shift is over, can I come into the knock and see what's going on? Uh, right? Because that you're already an employee, so you're already a known good. They allow you to come in. It doesn't cost their department 
any money because you're being paid by a different department. You can come in, you can see what's going on, you can build that relationship, um, so on and so forth. So that, that is what I would say. And that, again, as I say, is the danger of the CCNA. The CCNA, for most places in the world, for most places in the world, isn't going to get you far.